Hey, I want to give a real quick rundown of why I use ScreenFlow. Number one, there's no evidence when you're running the application, there's no evidence of it actually running, and I'll show you why later. Um, first of all, there's nothing in the menu bar. I know I got a lot of crap up here, but there's nothing, n but trust me, none of those icons mean ScreenFlow is running. Um, number two, it doesn't show up in the application switcher, and it doesn't show up in the dock. And that's really important if you're doing something that's highly branded. Uh, second of all, I'm using a three and a half, a two and a half year old laptop here. Um, 2.6 gigahertz Core 2 Duo, four gigs of RAM, blah 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 blah. Um, no big deal. It's no you know super duper workhorse. This is my capture machine. Anything like that. So here's Final Cut Pro running, and uh, the um, the canvas plays um, quite smooth. The meters bop up and down with the beat of the music. Uh, quite smooth. Um, this is, um, what do they call this, uh, expose, that works. Here's, um, what do we call this guy, Safari? <laughs> what do we call this guy, I just said. Uh, and here's a video playing inside of Safari from YouTube. And the last app I want to show you is Keynote. And here's uh, just some demo photos. And I'm kind of pushing Keynote to do all of what it does. You know, it's cool transitions and crap like that. So, um, and those play quite smooth. And this is all inside of um, ScreenFlow. But the thing I really want to show you is what you do when you want to edit this ScreenFlow document. Okay. And that's probably even more important. So, what I'm going to have to do is I have to stop this file. And then I'm going to have to go do a demo inside the demo. All right, this is sort of a, a little bit of a meta problem. I'm actually uh, using ScreenFlow to record a demo of ScreenFlow. Um, at any rate, uh, one very important thing to know is that when you stop a recording in ScreenFlow, it saves instantaneously. There's no long processing. There's no like, oh, let me compile this movie. There's no like mysterious, why is this beach balling for 10 minutes? Um, I know in olden times with Snap Z Pro, if you would record for a minute, it would take a, at least a minute or sometimes longer, I think, to actually save that file. And that could be really daunting. So what you're looking at here is you have your canvas where you actually see what you're working on. You have your timelines. And I only recorded two tracks. I recorded my built-in uh, audio off my laptop and I recorded the screen. Had I wanted to, I could turn on the eyesight track and I would get um, the built-in audio here would also have video with it and would show it as a little picture in picture. And over here you have your tabs that you use for editing. Now really the editing app in ScreenFlow is probably more important than the um, than the capture itself because because of some of the things you do. So like say for example I have this this uh, highlighted window here and if I go to the call out section and I say that I want to um, in my track I want to add a call out I can call out my mouse or I can call out my foreground window. Now in this case it's just the um, uh, 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 meters here but if I were to call out my mouse and hit play uh, I would see the mouse um, scurrying about. Let's jump out. Let's jump down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a call out right here. And there I can see my mouse running. Okay. ScreenFlow records the data that the OS uses to draw the screen, which means you can manipulate it differently. So for example, if I come down, let's find a part in this where I, I, I actually have a window. So if I wanted to darken and blur this, and this probably isn't the best example, if I go add call out and call out foreground window, you can see my everything else is really dark. Now I can adjust the opacity of that and I can even blur it. Okay, so imagine if this uh, this window was, you know, more like centered in the screen and I had a bunch of other stuff. And that, that effect can dissolve in and dissolve out at any rate that I want to do. So um, the other thing that's important is as you know, most Macs are still recording in a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, but I want to put this stuff on YouTube in, in 16 by 9. So what I do is I change my canvas to 1280 by 720, and I apply that. And then, and then I can see here I have my screen, which is smaller than my canvas. I go to my video track, and I change that to 89%, which I know is the width of it slide that up like that. Now I've already positioned my windows so that they don't hang out of the 16 by 10. And now you can see I'm playing this stuff in real time. But watch this. So let's say I want to call attention to, let me see, let's go to something here. Ah, so here I play this this uh, QuickTime or this uh, YouTube video in the middle of my screen. So let's say I want to do a video action. 
okay? And I'm going to zoom in on my timeline so I can see what's going on here. So I want to do a video action, okay? And I want to zoom into that slowly. So here's my cursor before it, and I have my screen settings the way it is. I put my cursor anywhere after. It doesn't have to be at the end of the action. It's just anywhere after that action. And I say, well, I want to zoom into, eh, let's say, 200%, okay? The 200 might be too much. The 200 is a little too much, so let's go to 170. Now, I want you to think about how long this would take you to do if you were to take an I show you movie, put it into Final Cut Pro, and edit around on it. Now, watch this, and zoom. Done in real time, and it's playing. So, there's my quick time, uh, my YouTube video playing from the web. All right, let's zoom out here. Let's go back to my, uh, we're going to zoom out. And we're going to go to my full size, which I determined was 89%. And I'm going to put this guy like this. And then we're going to see, um, here's the keynote stuff playing in real time and smoothly, I might add. Again, this is I show you's recording of it. Okay, and let me think, what was the third thing? Oh, my uh, Final Cut timeline. Let's go back to here, and that was about here. Okay, here. So I'm going to zoom back in on my timeline. I'm going to drop down one of these little video action chicklets. And I'm going to zoom this guy to about 170 again. And after that, I'm going to go to here. And we'll let that guy... So let's go... And I also want to point out how much I'm zooming. And it actually looks really good. It's quite astonishing. Yeah, let's show the user interface, maybe. And then I zoom into that. And we'll see that play because I wanted to show that that plays smoothly too. So anyway, this is ScreenFlow. This is why everybody who does screen tutorials should be using ScreenFlow. And uh, now I'm going to stop this recording within a recording and I'm going to actually do this kind of editing and you're going to be able to watch uh, what I've been doing. So that's ScreenFlow and that's why everybody should use it.